Okay, let's get busy here. There's a lot going on this hour. We're going to take a good look at something that is becoming more and more and more fascinating to literally hundreds of millions of people around the world. They're learning that you don't have to go to your doctor and get a prescription to get well. There are things in nature that the pharmaceutical companies can't even touch. The problem is identifying them and finding out which are efficacious for your particular kind of disorder. And diagnosing is is not an easy task. I don't know how doctors do it at all anymore. There are so many different diseases out there that are actually environmental in cause, caused by various pollutants and toxins in your body. There are only so many different kinds of symptoms you can manifest, and if you think about that, it becomes uh, pretty obvious how difficult it is. But the idea of herbal medicines is something that is truly a hallmark of our time and is exploding in terms of interest and, well, efficiency, because they work. Here with us tonight to talk about his new book is Ty Bollinger. And you know Ty from uh, many visits on the program. And if you go to the top of the website right there under guests, which I hope you can, take a look at Ty's name and click on that name, and you'll take a look at his, his true masterpiece of a book, which continues to sell all around the world. I don't know how many different languages it may have been translated into right now, but uh, click on his name and you go right to his website of cancertruth.net. And hi, hi, Ty. Welcome back. Jeff, hey, how are you tonight, my friend? It's good to talk to you after uh, a long hiatus here. It's Well, you've been busy. Yes, I have. Yes, I have. Well, the book is called Cancer Step Outside the Box, and it's in its fifth printing now? It is. It's in the fifth edition, yeah. yeah. Wow. Fifth edition, we've uh, sold over 100,000 copies worldwide, actually. So That's um, amazing, just truly amazing. Now, you continually update the book, I guess, as you learn more and more things. Yeah, yeah. Over the past five years since I published the book, I've updated it, you know, five, five different editions. And right. And I've got more changes coming for a sixth edition, because the... I, you never know all you don't know, and so as I'm learning more, I'm I'm mm-hmm. changing and editing and amending and trying to make it better, trying to trying to help more people with it. I'm just putting a story up in a little while, which further underscores the cause of many cancers to be bacteria, which anybody who's studied Royal Rife uh, and others know full well is true. And there is a, a lot to be said about keeping your immune system up to speed. But if you happen to fall behind the curve and get cancer, Ty's book is absolutely beyond mandatory. You you ought to get it anyhow. Every single household in America and the world ought to have this book in it. I'm not kidding you. I'm not overblowing this. This is not hyperbole. Cancer, Ty's book, stepping outside the box is, well, if if you come down with cancer and one out of two people will, and you don't read this book, you are cheating yourself, and you may be consigning yourself to a much earlier demise than you would normally, even without cancer, certainly encounter. It's it's that bad now. How many people do you think, Ty, the, the book has helped? How many lives do you think you may have saved with this book? Any guess? Oh, I'm, I'm certain in the thousands. Yeah. Oh, more than that. Tens of thousands, maybe hundreds. We don't know. This yeah, book has, a, has gone so far to do so much for people, and it's just an incredible book. Well, I, I thank you for all the kudos, Jeff. I really appreciate it. Um, but, you know, as I say in the book, I'm just kind of a middleman. I put, I put the information together. They're not necessarily any of my treatments per se. And um, kind of a, a, a good segue for our, our herbal topic tonight Indeed. is, uh, you know, one of the doctors that I have uh, bec- begun, become very good friends with in my cancer research is is the doctor that I collaborated with. He actually wrote this book as he was um, in medical school, and I, becoming friends with him, we were I worked with him to edit it and make it uh, understandable for the layperson, which I am. And so we this is this is our book that that you were mentioning earlier, the the herbal medicine guide. It's actually called a a guide to understanding herbal medicines and uh, surviving the coming pharmaceutical monopoly. And so I, you know, I became friends with Dr. Farley uh, through my cancer research. And, and then a natural offshoot of that friendship was this book. Michael, are you there? I certainly am. It's a pleasure to meet you, Mr. Randall. 
Hi, well, it's nice to meet you. Glad to have you on the program. Thank you. If you click on Dr. Michael Farley's name, you go to his page, scroll down, and you'll find this uh, essential book, uh, A Guide to Understanding Herbal Medicines and Surviving the Coming Pharmaceutical Monopoly. W- when, did you, when did you write the book, Michael, uh, approximately? I'm going to age myself, but actually, uh, I wrote it over 20 years ago. <laughs> it's not aging yourself. There's, there's uh, basically... So much in the book, it's, it's not, I, I like to think of it as not just a book about treatments, but about lifestyle. I mean, the, these are things in many cases that we should be having in our diets, and if we did have them in our diets, we, we wouldn't get sick. But in many cases, I guess, uh, there is a deficiency, and this book explains so much about what, uh, I mean, we're talking about everything from mistletoe to oats to milkweed uh, it's an extraordinary book. How long did it take you to write it? That book, I decided to write originally for physicians to understand better uh, what they were doing and what they were using, because about 85% of our medicine comes from herbal sources, uh, copies of them, synthetics or uh, stereoisomers. And I sent one to Ty to read, and he said, we've got to write this so that the layperson can understand it and and Mm -hmm. appreciate it, and he did a phenomenal job. What what amazes me as as I go through the pages here is how astonishingly deadly the average American diet has become. I'm amazed that people live as long as they do, Michael. It shocks me, considering what they eat. It it is it is shocking, and in the United States, we're not even close to the top. Uh, our diets here are, are absolutely pathetic, and uh, there are many countries that uh, have much longer lifespans than we do. Right. Uh, ultimately, uh, there's an old silly expression: "Never too thin, never too rich." Well, it's true. Body fat is absolutely intrinsically involved with disease. The the more body fat you carry around, and I'm not sure of the mechanics of it, but it's directly related to 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 good health. Uh, I guess Jeff, Jeff some, let me let me cut in here real quick. Go that, ahead, Ty. That that's a great topic and you've got the the absolute best person that I've ever been introduced to to explain the relationship between obesity, body fat and disease. So uh Dr. Farley, uh Share with him, share with uh, Jeff and the audience what you've shared with me over the past several months. Great, yeah, because even we're talking. Look, even uh, five pounds overweight, okay? It doesn't matter. Overweight is overweight. Uh, you, what is it about? You're not supposed to be able to pinch more than an inch of fat on your body. Uh, we need a little body uh, fat, of course, but essentially that's true. Um, the problems with obesity are uh, multiple. But let me give you two that lead directly to cancer. Um, What we know now uh, is that fat cells actually produce and act as exocrine cells and secrete estradiol. Correct. And as I'm sure most of your listening audience knows, many, many cancers are directly related to estradiol. It right. acts as fertilizer. Right. Another point is as we become obese, we become less sensitive to insulin. Insulin is what regulates the amount of sugar in our system. Uh-huh. So the receptors to insulin become desensitized. They It requires much more insulin to lower your glucose level. So people are running around with high glucose levels. Every single type of cancer cell, whether it be prostate, breast, pancreatic, bladder, uh, or gliomas in the brain, all of them, their primary food is sugar. And that's, that's, so uh... we're feeding them their primary food <laughs> and fertilizing them with excess estrogen. Mm-hmm and opening the door of Pandora's box. 